Hey guys, Chad over Kayak Bass Fishing. And one of the things that you guys have been asking for is, man, Chad, if I can't afford a power pole or some piece of expensive thing that you got, what can I do instead? So today we're gonna take it back to the basics and talk about that. So obviously a commercially available product isn't 100% taking it back to the basics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you that if you can't afford a power pole, right? which I think is one of the best tools that I've ever added to my kayak. But if it doesn't make sense for you uh, financially, for the amount of time you spend on the water, the conditions that you fish in, then by all means, I want to talk to you about some of the other solutions that are out there. Now, a long, long, long time ago, sticks that were shoved through the scupper holes of kayaks were referred to as stakeout poles. In fact, back in the history of kayak fishing, I got to give credit where credit's due. I think the first person uh, to ever make one was a guy named Captain Dick, okay? Captain Dick's, uh, well, the, the guy's name was Stan, but he had a company called Captain Dick, and he made a product called the stakeout pole. And when I first saw it, I was like, why would somebody buy a pole that they could just make a pole themselves and tie a rope to the top of it? So he made this pole, it had a foam grip on the top, and it had a rope coming out of the top with a clip on it so you could clip it to your kayak. Um, in the early days of kayak fishing, uh, anchor trolleys were a lot more prevalent than they are now because they were part of the only real anchoring um, solution. So I was good friends with Stan and I started using that pole and it served my needs, but I always felt like that that pole should have a different handle or, or have a handle on the top of it. Um, it didn't do that great in, in, in puff mud, okay? It didn't do that great on super soft bottoms. And so when the opportunity came along and Luther Cyphers from Yak Attack said to me, man, what is the one product out there right now that is a problem that needs to be solved? I was like, I'll tell you, it's the stakeout pole, okay? Uh, there was a company that made a stakeout stick and they used a fork at the end. So they got close in that they solved the problem of having a handle, but there wasn't enough surface area that when you wanted to take that thing and stick it in the water or when you wanted to stand up and slow paddle along and then switch back from paddling and pulling or stake your kayak out, that it would solve that problem. So the reason that I've got this particular product in my hand right here is if you can see right now, this thing is dirty, okay? It is beat up. This thing has probably got, no, it's definitely got 200,000 or more miles on it riding around inside of a fishing kayak. So because these things flex a bit and because I can put them through the hatch on the inside of the kayak, this thing stays inside one of my fishing kayaks. And unfortunately, one of the things that you guys don't see all the time when I'm shooting a TV show or when I'm filming is a lot of the scouting, okay? So I'll go out before a fishing trip and I'll spend a lot of time scouting. One of the things that I like to do when I'm scouting is put my paddle away. And even if I'm using a power pole, I like to use a, a pole, right, for pulling, a lot like pulling a flats boat. And so if the bottom is soft uh, or if I want to be able to control my drift a little better, I'll use the the foot end of this thing, okay? And I'll even slow paddle with it because there's enough resistance there to do it. And then if I got to stop, I can just press down on it, hold myself in place, flip it around and either stick it through an anchor trolley, stick it through the scupper, or stick it through the bungee on the side of my kayak um, and stop myself. But I use this thing a lot of times if I'm scouting, okay? Before I find the fish, I'm pulling along real slow. I don't want to make the noise of a paddle. And more importantly, if I'm pulling and I need to turn, I like this longer one, right? I like the eight foot version so I can put it further out in front of the kayak and I can put a little, I can put a little leverage on it and I can turn my boat, get it exactly where I want to, then stop. And then a lot of times what I do is I'll drop it through the scupper behind me. So it's out of my way. It drops into the tank well of the kayak. One thing I will caution you against is if you put your, any type of anchoring pole through the scuppers of your kayak, try to limit the amount of torque you put on it. If you put it through there and you put a whole lot of torque on your scupper, you could pop a scupper. So I will disclaimer this video by saying, if you take my advice and drop it through the scupper, also take my advice and don't angle your kayak too much because if you pop your scupper, don't call me and tell me, man, you really, you made me break my kayak because I'm telling you, don't break your kayak. Say, don't put a lot of torque on your boat. Don't put your stakeout pole in there and go, man, now my kayak's twice as stable as it was before. I can stand over here on one side because you're going to put too much pressure on that tube that makes up the scupper and you're going to pop it. Your boat's going to fill up with water and then you're going to be standing there with a sunk kayak and then you're going to try to call me, but I'm not going to answer because I know you're calling me because you sunk your kayak because you stuck your parking pole through the scupper because I got a sixth sense like that. Anyway, I'm just messing with you. So look, this is a low tech solution to 
uh, a power pole, okay? It's a standard stakeout pole. This thing comes in a six foot version and it comes in an eight foot version. One of the things that I like is that the company Yak Attack is always versatile, always thinking. And so more often than not, I carry this one in the backup kayak. I give this to the camera guys. I give this to my guests on the show, um, or I keep it inside my kayak as a extra backup. So this one, I've got tied together with these gear ties. It allows me to, you know, keep the pieces together so that one piece doesn't end up in the very back of the kayak. Um, these things are pretty cool, these Night Eyes gear ties. So if you need some kind of flexible tie stuff together solution, those things are phenomenal. But this is a two-piece uh, park and pole, and you basically just screw it together uh, a lot like you would a pool cue, okay? So let me stand it up. It's way easier if it stood up and you put a little weight on it. So you screw these things together, and you end up with an eight-foot parking pole, okay? So the thing about this, though, is it comes with an extension, and you can make it even longer. So I carry the extension in the back seat of my truck behind the seat. Uh, I carry this, and if I know I'm going to need to pole in deeper water, I can add the extension in there, and it allows me to have a lot of versatility. So that's that, okay? If I want a short stick, okay, if I want to use a stick where I'm not going to um, be in the water, and I'm not going to have to worry about having that foot on there, I'll actually just drop this thing through the scupper and I use it like my river stick or I use it in a stick where I drop it through the scupper. There's nothing up here uh, in my way. So a lot of times I'm using this and you guys don't see it. So this parking pole, right, from Yak Attack is very, very, very versatile. When I'm either guiding a trip or I'm fishing with an inexperienced angler, or if I'm fishing with a kid or a lot of times when I'm fishing with Christy, I like this pole too because folks that hang up a lot, this thing comes in real, 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 and handy, okay? So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either cut the line if you want to retrieve the lure, run it through this guide hole, this keyhole right here, take the pole and run it down to the bottom and knock that lure straight off and then pull it up. Or if you don't want to cut the line, you don't want to lose it that way, you take this little hook right here and you hook that on the line, you pull against it, have the person hold the line or you hold it, run it down there and knock that lure off. So even in 12 foot of water with the 12 foot pole, but especially in eight footer or, uh, or less, you can knock that thing off of there real easy. If this happens to slip out of your hand, the end of it is foam, it's gonna float. That's one thing that's also awesome about this pole is that it floats, but even if this foam is not there, the pole is watertight, so therefore there's air trapped inside and the pole will float anyway. So this just allows it to float up a little bit so the head sticks up and it's easier to see because a black pole floating in the water by itself would be difficult to see. This foam also serves when you put it in a uh, and a paddle holder on the side of the kayak, it really quietens it down from smacking against the side of the boat if you wiggle the boat a little bit. Uh, and it's also a great comfort grip uh, for holding on to it. Now, the other thing that's cool about this keyhole right here is you can put a mighty bolt through there and it attach any of your Yak Attack attachments on there. You can add a camera to it. Uh, you can use the ball style mounts and attach them to it. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with that keyhole. You can also hang it up by the keyhole, but uh, because I was in the, involved in the design of this product, this one feature right here that we use to unhang lures, that's not exactly what it was designed for. And I think it's funny because I've actually told a couple of people that this is what it's for, and they're like, no, that's not what it's for. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what it's for. And they're like, no, dude, that's, that's, just, that's not what it's for. And I'm like, no, no, that, that's what it's for. And they're like, no, bro, that's not what it's for. And I'm like, okay, well, I designed this part of it, and so... Since I designed it, I kind of get to decide what it's for. So if anybody argues about what this piece right here is for, it's actually for picking up duck decoys. So when I go duck hunting out of my kayak, I don't like to wear gloves a lot of time in the wintertime, but I also don't like to stick my hand in ice cold water picking up decoys. So you can take this pole, reach out there, hook that decoy line, pick it up, bring the pole around, set that decoy in the back of the boat. You can pick up your whole spread without ever getting your hands wet. So that little hook feature right there, that's what that's designed for. But the width of this thing is perfectly designed ergonomically for your hand, so you got leverage and it doesn't hurt your hand. It's designed to push on softer bottom, it's designed to push through mud, and it's designed to act like a little bit of a paddle. Okay, so I've offered you a lower tech, lower cost solution to the power pole micro anchor. But a lot of you are not going to be satisfied with me offering you a $60 stakeout pole. So you're gonna say, come on, man, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta have an idea of even more low tech than that. And I do, because I've been around since before most of this stuff existed, so we've solved a lot of these problems. If you want a really cheap, inexpensive way to anchor your fishing kayak in shallow water, 
go to a thrift store and buy a pair of old golf clubs or, or uh, uh, buy one if they'll let you. Uh, but if you buy a couple of them, you got some throwaway stakeout poles. Just cut the head of the golf club off. It's skinny at the tip. It gets wider as you go. It's got a grip on the end. Slide that thing down through your scupper. It clips and it holds you in place. And because it's flexible, it actually acts like a little bit of a brake. So it kind of like, it kind of like, you know, it kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for here? It kind of like uh, flexes. It flexes. So it flexes a little bit. So you can get your flex on, especially if you can buy like a really high end carbon fiber shaft, you know, for that guy that like he was going to be like Tiger Woods, but then he bought like, you know, $800 worth of golf clubs, played four times. You know, it's kind of like the same person that buys their Bowflex and then it turns into a clothing rack in the bedroom. So you can find this stuff at like Goodwill and thrift shops and Craigslist and all that stuff all the time. Get a hacksaw, cut the head off of it. Go to Ace Hardware, find yourself one of them little like little chair rubber foots that goes on the end. You can even add that to it. Kind of makes it cool. Put a piece of heat shrink over the end, fold it over, whatever. Okay. Sharpen it on the concrete down. If it's graphite, you can just sharpen it, you know, just kind of like that. That's the low tech way to sharpen it. If you don't have a grinder, which by the way, if you're a man and you don't have a grinder, there's a word for men that don't own a grinder. Anybody care to venture what that word is? Woman. <laughs> anyway, so um, look, the other solution and probably one of the lowest tech, most affordable, it's going to float. It's going to solve the problem. It's going to warp over time and deteriorate. But if you consider they're relatively inexpensive, it's tomato steaks. You can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, your favorite outdoor store, even Ace Hardware, and those green uh, coated, they look like rebar, but they're, they're, they're tomato steaks. Okay. You stick them in the ground. Those work great as, um, as uh, stakeout poles, graphite rods. If you can just find old antenna uh, rods, old graphite rods, those work great. Old pool cues. If you can find old pool cues, um, they make great two piece, you know, stakeout poles and they're kind of heavy. So what works great about a pool cue is you don't got to do anything. You just buy an old pool cue. They're heavier on the end. So you stick it in the scupper and drop it and the weight of it actually anchors it into the ground. So a good old pool cue works great. I used them for years and years and years. And just straight up, that was one of my stakeout poles for a long time. I liked a little bit of flex to them. Uh, I used to use them like power poles back in the day. I'd stick one pool cue through one scupper and one pool cue through the other scupper. And it just kept my boat from turning. In fact, there's some like really old frog fishing videos of me of mine. And you can see the, the pool cue sticking up out of the hole because I was in the right depth of water where it stuck up. And uh, people always ask like, what the heck is that sticking up out of your scupper hole? It was a pool cue, you know. Um, uh, telescoping painter poles, those, those work great. In fact, those telescoping painter's poles that you use for, you know, painting, that's why they call them a painter's pole, the telescoping version, you know, they have a screw end on the end of them, okay? Here's the secret. Take that screw in, go buy the roller attachment. Take that roller attachment, cut it off about halfway down. About halfway in is where the, rod, the metal rod ends that goes inside it that the that the thing is, you know, the roller part is attached to, just cut that off with a hacksaw and then sharpen that on the concrete or take a, a you know, a Dremel tool, another thing men should have, uh, or the grinder and just bring that down to a nice point. Bada boom, bada bing. You've got a telescoping pole that is low tech, that is relatively inexpensive. I mean, you're going to pay $35 to $40 when you can just go ahead and buy this thing that is like bomb proof. It's like strong. It's flexible. You can run over it with your truck. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just not going to break. And so, you know, what's funny is a lot of times I say stuff like this in the videos and people go, yeah, man, you can't run over that thing with your truck. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go run over this with my truck. All right. So I ran this joker over with my truck. To prove that you can run it over with the truck, try that with your golf club or your tomato steak or, you know, whatever other do-it-yourself solution that you can come up with. So look, low-tech solutions, I talked through a few of them. Comment in the comment selection and let us know if you've got a low-tech solution or a low-cost solution for a parking pole. OK, if not, go support Yak Attack. Great American made products, great company that make a premium product that's got a lot of functionality in it that you're not going to duplicate by doing it yourself. But if you're a do it yourself or and you're looking for that low tech solution, you want to take it back to the basics. There's a lot of solutions out there, and I'm sure there's some that I haven't even thought of. But a golf club, a pool cue, 
a stakeout steak, a tomato steak from, uh, from Lowe's or Home Depot or your favorite outdoor store works great. And we'll see you next time on uh, kayak bass fishing. Smash that thumbs up. Give this video a comment, please. Please give me a comment. Comment. It's frustrating when there's 5,000 views and like 40 to 150 comments. I need 5,000 comments. I tell you what, you guys hit 1,000 comments on this video and I'll give away a parking pole. If you hit 2,000 comments on this video, I'll give away a couple of them. So yeah, let's do 1,000 comments. If this gets 1,000 comments, I'll give away a parking pole. So anyway, now we're gonna go crank the truck and run these suckers over.